Yes, guys, welcome back for another transfer video. Welcome back for yet another edition of the latest in the crazy, crazy world that is Chelsea Football Club. There's plenty to get into in today's video, as there usually is. Ever since the season's ended, like, we have just been front and centre with all the headlines. And I'm not too sure how many here we goes we're going to be expecting to see over this weekend. Maybe Nicholas Jackson might be the only one that we see. But next week is looking like it's going to be a crazy week for us with the Havertz to Arsenal situation and the potential buy-in interest. Mason Mount to Man United. All the potential outgoings as well. Saudi Arabia could be literally saving our entire summer window. They're trying to they're taking half of our deadwood basically. We're gonna delve into all of it in today's video. But before we start, as always, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell notification button as well. Get your hat trick, because again, our attack still isn't doing that. And yeah, let, let's get straight into news. We'll start off with the big news of today. Nicholas Jackson, Chelsea have decided to activate the release clause for Nicholas Jackson. Chelsea are set to pay 35 million euros and they are in the middle of discussing the instalment plan. Three more clubs are open to pay the clause as well. So Chelsea will be fast as the player wants the Premier League move. The contract will be long, more than five years, which I don't know how we're going to be able to do because I swear UEFA... Um, made a new rule for next season that you can't sign new players on over five year deal on over five year contracts. But Fabrizio is reporting it, so I guess I'm just missing something with that remark. But here we go is coming soon, which is what Fabrizio is saying. Now I know there was people who initially looked at the signing of Nicholas Jackson and they were like, "Who is this guy? Why are we buying another young prospect when there's?" Um, not no experienced strikers in the squad that we can rely on. Jackson isn't being brought to start from Chelsea to start for Chelsea just yet. Felix reported a couple days ago that he's in the young striker list. Chelsea weren't even expected to look for a player in that list, but just because we're picking somebody from there doesn't mean that they're going to be the number one that we're going to prioritize this season. There's going to be an experienced striker that comes in too. All this means to me is that one Abroyo or Datra Fafana is leaving. I kind of think that is going to be Brozier because he's got links with um, Brighton. There's Napoli who are potentially interested in him as well. I think if anybody's going, it's probably going to be him, whether it's on loan or whether it's on a permanent. But Nicholas Jackson looks good. From the limited amount of football that I've seen from him, he looks like a very good centre forward. Got a decent all-round game onto him. Obviously, I need to see how it translates to the Premier League. But he looks physical. He looks like he can drop deep, find passes in good spaces. He's very selfless on the ball. He scored 11 in his last 12 games for Villarreal or something very similar to that. So, he looks like a good forward. Looks like a quality centre-forward in the making. But, need to see what he's like at Chelsea. This is one of the data analysis signings and everything. Never heard of this guy until a couple of days ago. So I'm not going to blow smoke up you guys' asses. But I don't think this is anything to turn your nose up. I think this could be a quiet gem for us. And if it is, big up to Bowley, big up to Igbali. Because it could be another baddie of shield in the making. But we do have to see. We do have to see. Um, and it's also an upgrade on Havertz. Just, just adding that in there. On to... I was going to say Mendy, but I might as just say Saudi Arabia in general because they, um, Al Ali wants Edward Mendy. Negotiations have started to sign the player. Al Nasser are also advancing in talks to sign Hakim Ziyech from Chelsea. Negotiations are underway as called by Foot Mercado. Players open to discuss a proposal's been made and Chelsea expect final bids from Saudi clubs for Ziyech and Abamyang too. Which is just ridiculous. Ziyech, Abamyang, Mendy, potentially Koulibaly if he wants to go there. Even Lukaku if they can negotiate a decent wage or if the hippo stops being so greedy about his money. Yo, Saudi Arabia, you are literally saving my football club. I don't think I can come up with the words to express how grateful I am if they can pull at least three of these deals across the line. If Mendy can be tempted to go to Saudi Arabia unbelievable get it done if ZH can be tempted get it done 
don't put some stupid ungodly price on their heads don't be greedy just because it's Saudi Arabia and we think, let me just see how much we can get off them. No, we have spent years trying to get rid of some of these players. Like I said, Ziyech has been on the list for how long? Lukaku, how long? Oba, Mendy, Koulibaly, respectfully, we should just be trying to get rid of them anyway. Just let them go for whatever the price is, especially the likes of Koulibaly and Lukaku. Because those wages coming off our bill are way more important to us than any sort of transfer fee because the fee would probably be low anyway so play it by ear see what happens but yo goodness me if they take even three of those players we might already have balanced our books and we haven't even sold anyone to a rival yet that would be ridiculous absolutely ridiculous um Kai Havertz let's get into the latest on the giraffe situation Arsenal opening bid is rejected not over at all Talks will continue between the two sides. Um, Chelsea are looking for around 75 million, including add-ons for Havertz. Although there's a feeling a deal can be agreed for less than this figure, which I'm thinking is going to be around the 60 million mark. Chelsea wanted to keep Havertz, but he doesn't want to re-sign a new contract. And he wants to go to Arsenal. I feel sorry for all the fans who defended him for three years straight because he has ratted every single last one of you out, especially if he goes to Arsenal. Me, I'm not really too hurt by it. I'm glad he's gone. You know me, I've, I've criticised this guy so much over the last two years. Going to Arsenal doesn't make a difference to me. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, oh, but Kai Havertz could ball out at Arsenal. We could regret this transfer. It could be like Kevin De Bruyne. It could be like Salah. It could be like all of that crap. I, I really don't care. Really don't care. I haven't watched this guy for three years frustrate me just to be worried about him going to Arsenal. I look at it from a different perspective. To me, we're taking 60 million off Arsenal that could be going to a much better player, a player that could actually benefit their team, who could start for their team. Like a Caicedo, for example. They're pulling out of the Caicedo deal to focus on Havertz. It's one of the most brain-dead decisions I've ever heard, but I ain't gonna tell them that. Run us the 60 million, we can go and get Caicedo, you figure out what position Kai Havertz plays best in because this fan base has spent three years trying to do it and it's the most mind-numbing discussion I've ever heard in my life. Take him, is what it is, whatever. But Bayern Munich are also interested. Tuchel apparently wants him as a striker again, even though apparently to half of this fan base he was, he was never a striker in the first place. Hey, what do we know? What do we know? Hopefully we get that bidding war that bowley has been trying to pull. Because if that's the case, we might even make our money back for Havertz. Apparently, with amortisation, this already looks like a profit on the books if we sell him for £60 million, Which is insane from Todd Bowley. And you've got to give him the respect. Too much criticism for Todd Bowley for last season. And it is fairly deserved. But you need to give him the praise where it's been done. He has, he has found loopholes in FFP. He's about to pull 60 million for flipping Kai Havertz. Mason Mount, we could get 55, 60 for him. That's insanity. Getting even 100 million for those two road runners is, ins is insane. So let's see what happens. But I feel like we're going to have a very good amount for Havertz due next week. Um, Caicedo bid should be coming next week. Fabrizio Romano did report on that. Um, De Marzio said Chelsea are out of the race for Andre Onana. Um, we would make a proposal for Di Marzio, but Milan don't plan to evaluate any proposals and Mignon doesn't even want to leave himself. So we're probably not getting Onana, we're probably not getting Mignon, but there are other options out there. To me, if they don't want to join Chelsea, don't beg. Don't beg. Leave them there. It is what it is. Bring in players that want to be at this football club. There's the likes of Marmadash Philly. I think David Raya could still be a potential unless Tottenham have shored that one up by now. But there are other goalkeepers out there too. It doesn't take much to be an upgrade. Even get a Kilo Navas on loan, for goodness sakes. Like, that could work for us. I wouldn't mind that. But yeah, we'll see what happens on the goalkeeping front. Last point is Lukaku's annoyed that Chelsea aren't sanctioning another loan deal to Inter. Quit then, you useless hippo. Because you're just, you're just eating into our wage structure week in and week out. And we want you gone as much as you want to be gone. But yeah, that is the end of the transfer news for this weekend. Big up everybody that's locked in.
As always, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care. And as always, up the Chels.